Good evening, everyone. Jai Hind. It's my honor and a and pleasure to be in conversation with one of the most illustrious generals of the Indian Army, former Army Chief General Shankar Roy Chaudhary, who has also been the member of Parliament and who's had a vast experience in the Army. He has fought various wars for our country, brought, brought glory to our country, led the country, the Indian Army, one of the largest armies of the world, I would say, at a time when we will come to it. It's been a wonderful journey. The general grew up in a school in uh, in Masuri, in fact, did his graduation from went further on to uh, St. Davis College, in fact. And of course, when he joined the army, very passionate, commissioned in the 20 Lancers in the Armored Corps, and needs no introduction at all. But here we are in conversation with General Shankar Roy Chaudhary. Sir, Jai Hind, and thank you very much for taking your time, sir. Jai Hind, Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. So let's I start from the very beginning, sir. You know, when you were in Weinbrenner in Masuri and St. George's School in Masuri, was it always your ambition to join the army, sir, from those days? Uh, I'll tell you why I wanted to join the army. There was no reason, really. My father was in the bank. Then those days, the Imperial Bank and the State Bank of India. He was posted at Masuri. And I was motivated, I guess, by seeing the gentleman cadets from the IMA walking out in Masuri. And that was the time when I said, I also must join these cadets. And uh, they came and I used to observe them. I used to watch them, um, never knowing what I would be. Then I said, hey, let's try it. So I gave, I came back to Calcutta to Anderson Howard, gave the UPSC exam. And I went to Bangalore for my um, uh, service selection board. And then, well, that's, we moved on. The first real soldiers I saw, I didn't know, it, were soldiers of the Madras Regiment who were located in the selection board. Those were the first soldiers, Indian Army soldiers I saw. Uh, then um, I went through the normal, you know, the uh, went to the selection, went for my selection and then I joined what was then known as the Joint Services Wing, now known as the National Defense Academy. So today, when people ask me, hey, sir, are you from the NDA? Which course are you? I said, my dear chap, I was before the NDA. I was in what's known as the Joint Services Wing. And um, well, it was a tough life. It was a tough life because I was a civilian, naturally, obviously. And uh, we were lodged in uh, hutments, hot as hell. Uh, in some hutments, there were no telephone, there was no fans. But anyway, I remember the first hutman, uh, the first lot of friends I made were those who were in my cabin where I was located and we became friends. One of my friends was from Ludhiana wearing Ludhiana patloons. I seen them for the first time. There was another chap from Ambala and a chap from Assam. A chap from Assam who's from Shillong. And we were a real hodgepodge of a cross section of, I say we are students, the student population of the time. And I settled down to enjoy myself. There was not much enjoyment in the beginning. There was not much enjoyment for me in the beginning because I was ragged like hell. Go and get my shots, go and get, go to the dhobi. Well, I got used to that. We all got used to that. And then, just to top it off, 
used to be sent for these long runs, long, long, I mean really long. Came back sweating, stinking, no time for a bath because there's a next fallen was there. Anyway, that's how I entered the services. That's so interesting, that's sir. That's so interesting to hear. So let's talk about your you were also in St. Xavier's Calcutta before the uh, before you joined services wing, that's the NDA which became later on. Am I right, sir? Uh, please repeat that again. You were also with the St. Xavier's College in uh, Calcutta before you went to the Joint Services Wing. Am I right, sir? Yes, I was studying in St. Xavier's College, but it was also a school. I was studying in St. Xavier's School. And then I joined the Joint Services Wing. Uh, there was, of course, I was stepping out into the un unknown because the services were a totally... Uh, unknown entity to my family, so <laughs> there were lots. Uh, you know, my grandmother says, "How can you join the army? What's the army? Where are where are they?" I said, "Look, I'm going to join the join services wing." I went there, and uh, I was a day late. Let okay. me tell you that I was a day late to join, and. I was very favorably impressed when I stepped off a Dehradun platform and I was received because the reception parties had moved on. I was received by a tall, smartly dressed Havaldar of the Maratha Light Infantry with his hackle and all that. And that saw me into the army. But life was tough. You were ragged. You were pushed around uh, by everybody because I was a, amongst with others of my course. We were all first termers, and um, we were divided into cabins. Cabins had four people in each room, except my cabin, which there were six of us. So they said, "Oh, che number wale kid cadets, unse ek." So I used to be called amongst others, go and get my laundry, go and do this, go and do that. And then, 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 then our display of kit had to be immaculate at nine o'clock precisely when we moved out for the fallen, because after that they were inspected in our absence, I suppose. And all we get was a list of people who checked us and say, all right, party parade for you tonight. <laughs> and that's how life got on. And uh, there was no justice. Uh, but we didn't know there was such a thing called justice. Because we were first termers and we say, ye leo, wo leo, flana leo. And uh, we had to polish our own shoes, we, which we were not used to. And our shoes and boots were all scuffed, dirty. And sure enough, uh, next morning we were checked for the same and given <laughs> more party parades. So this was a continuous process. But we got used to it. And I think I was enjoying myself by the time I was in the third term. Oh, that's wonderful, sir. That's, that's really, that's, that's really very nice, sir. Sir, when you were giving your choice of arm, was Armored Corps always, you had made up your mind right from NDA days that you'll, you'll get commissioned in the Armored Corps? No, 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 it was not at the uh, beginning. Uh, no. This, I have to thank my squadron commander. My squadron commander was a gentleman called Major Lionel Keith Malcolm Bonney of Hodson's Horse. He was the moral example for us. He was not a PSC officer, but he was the moral example for us. He told us how an officer, without telling that, without mentioning that, without really, he, he showed us how a leader should behave without saying a word. But his own behavior was such 
uh, that we picked it up. Right, sir. Right, sir. And for your, sir, that for was your... the beginning of our journey. Yeah. Yeah. So for your passing your parade, sir. And uh, how was it when your parents came? Uh, obviously, they must have tipped you, sir, as a young second lieutenant. Uh, when the passing out parade came, times had changed a little. When we were in the JSW, we passed out at the end of our fourth term and we went to our respective academies. But when we went to NDA Kharakasla, it was a, we passed out at the end of our sixth term. Sixth term. Uh, academics was always a pressure. It was very difficult to keep up with them. Uh, we were divided into two groups. Um, technical and non-technical. There were clever boys with us who were very good. And uh, duffers like me who were not so good. But we had to keep up with the academic academic pressure was intense as a matter of fact when you when one was in the national defense academy and i differentiated between clementown and karakwasla the academic pressures were intense intense and then once we were diverted to our respective uh, you know uh, service academies army navy air force the academic pressures decreased but the physical pressure increased a lot. I don't know what the system was. By the time we came to the, by the time I and my course mates came to the Indian Military Academy, Deretu, the academic pressures went down, but the physical pressure went up and up and up until we were commissioned. Wow. So you were commissioned on the... Uh... Uh, 9 June 1957, if I'm not mistaken, it was 20 Lancers. Yes. Uh, 20th Lancers, I've never heard of the regiment until Major Bonnie wrote, KV, I'd like you to join this regiment. I'm now in this regiment. They had shifted him from Hodgson's house. So I said, yes, certainly. If you, you, and I got to like him a lot. And plus things like, you know, he was very keen on officer-like sports, like boxing, compulsory boxing. And he was very keen on that because they said, you can flail around, but that shows your spirit. And uh, I guess it does. Uh, I don't know whether they have it nowadays, the boxing part of it. But boxing was a prime... Uh, place where you, where they, your officers who were sitting around the ring judge ki this fellow is a shirker and this fellow can carry on even when he's battered up. It was a test of character. Sir, so you have fought uh, different wars. Sir. You were, you had participated actively in 1965 war, 1971 war. So where were you during the 1962 war, sir? Where were you posted that time? 1962 war, I was posted in Ahmednagar as an instructor in the Armored Corps Center in school. And sir. all of us naturally said, Ki, I, I, we want to get back to the regiment because the Chinese attack had taken place. Uh, the army, Armored Corps Center in school, very firmly said, you will stay where you are in Ahmednagar because we got hordes, because the army is expanding. Lots of people are being rec recruited and we need new people to train the troops who are, train the recruits who are coming in. So we could not get out of the uh, training assignment to which we had been placed there. And, uh, well, we carried on training the recruits. It was drudgery, uh, listening to the war getting on. Uh, my own regiment, 20th Lancers, was distinguished itself during the 1962 war by being, these were light tanks, which could be carried by aircraft. 
they were flown into Chushul. And that was one of the distinctions my regiment has. So that's how the 1962 war happened. And uh, well, we did. Well, there was no deb there was no debacle as of 1962. But when the the second time around, there was we were absolutely acclimatized and we fought like hell. Sir, 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 1965, sir. How did you? Where were you? Posted exactly the location in 1965 when you got the orders. 1965, we had a very tough time. I must tell you that. 1965, I was posted with a squadron of my regiment, which was in Cham Jordan, where the first blow of the Pakistanis came. It was a, we were caught flat-footed. Uh, I remember our CEO, one of the bravest persons I've seen, uh, he used, they were, and we were short of tanks because, you know, some were not there, some were in the workshop. So he used to lead the regiment in a jeep. And then he used to yell at us all the time, get on, get on, keep up, keep up with the tanks. Uh, one day, I remember him saying, look, you will get me killed. The CEO telling us, you will get me killed. Because he used to lead the regiment in his jeep. There were no tanks. I mean, we were short of tanks. So, these were there. And I was in, I was actually in Ferozpur. I got back, I had got back. Uh, from Ahmednagar, that training schedule, I was posted in Ferozpur, uh, in a hutment, hot as hell. And then we were moved without notice to a place called Fazilka, where the danger point at Ferozpur was Husseiniwala and uh, Husseiniwala and uh, the other headworks, uh, what the hell is this? It'll come back to me. Sulemanki headworks. Sir, sir. Across Pakistan the border. Pakistanis sir. came from Sulemanki. And, uh, well, we held them off. That was it. Sir, sir. I studied briefly in Throsport, sir. So we used to go to Senaimala very often on uh, weekend picnics. That's how I, I'm, I could connect with what you when you mentioned about. Uh, Hussain Wala and Firozpur, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Of course. Sir, yes. let's talk about your 1971, sir. Where were you deployed in 1971 and how did 1971, you 1971, 1971, 1971, uh, of course, the balloon went up. I was then in I was deployed with naturally. I was then I'd done my staff college. I was deployed with my regiment along uh, the uh, along the East Pakistan border until and, I, and just by chance, uh, my brigade commander who was Brigadier Tiwari. He said, Shankar, I want the, 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 by that time, General Jacob was the chief of staff in Eastern Command. He said, Shankar, I want you to, the chief of staff is coming. I've got to be here for some work was going on there. And uh, I want you to go, to go and meet him and uh, bring him to where the, the brigade has been deployed. I said, sure. So I went off. And this is something on the way when we were going, the East Pakistanis, the Bengalis, let's call it that, were flooding into India, flooding into India. And uh, so this was going on. We were all getting set for that until General Jacob 
said when I was driving his Jeep. He says, oh, Roy Chaudhary, Roy Chaudhary, twice. And he's from Calcutta also. He's a Jewish officer, Baghdadi Jew from Calcutta, Calcutta family. Baghdadi, Baghdadi. Can you speak? You know, he says, Roy Chaudhary, Roy Chaudhary. Uh, can you speak Bengali? I said, of course I can, sir. I'm, <laughs> I speak Bengali. Oh, okay. So when we got off, we got this kind of a message saying that you, me, will report to Fort William, the operations room. I said, what am I going to do in Fort William? I'm deploying here anyway. That was, these were planning, planned beyond our uh, this thing. And uh, when we got there in Fort William in the operations room, I found all my friends, people from JNK, people from um, elsewhere. The only common factor was they were all Bengali speaking. These people who had got together there were all Bengali speaking. So I said, what the hell is going on? And then I learned from General Jacob, he didn't personally tell me that we were creating the Mukti Bahim, okay, for sir. which okay. Bengali officers were literally taken with a broom and swept up and said, go. So the Mukti Bahini was created by, at that time, and Bengali speaking officers were sort of swept up like in a dust with a dust with a dustpan and says, okay, all Bengali speaking officers out. And we went, and then they had built up the Mukti Bahini organization by then. General Sarkar was the director. <clears throat> General Sarkar was the director of the Mukti Bahini. General Sarkar. So, so we went there and they had structured the Mukti Bahini that we were segregated district wise. The other side of the, for example, a boy who came from, uh, let's say he came from Pabna, which is a district in what is today Bangladesh. So they were sort of taken up. We didn't know who they were. There were a lot of Bengali members of the National Assembly with Mujib, with Sheikh, Sheikh Mujib, who had given his famous speech in Dhaka. This war we are fighting is our independence. We are fighting for our independence in Bengali. It was much in vogue in that time. And uh, Mukti Bahani took shape. Bengali officers who had crossed over from the Pakistan army came into the Indian side of the border and were swept up and they were put into the Mukti Bahini. The Mukti Bahini was structured in various places and this is how the Mukti Bahini took shape. So for 1971, I had a tremendous experience of being one of the creators at the level of major of the Mukti Bhai. Wow. So it was associated with the creation of the Mukti Bhai, which was a great experience for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is really... That and is... one story, one story, one story. One of the officers was a Bengali speaker from Lucknow. Okay, sir. So when they were swept up, his name was Bengali, obviously. He said, sir, I'm from Lucknow. I can't speak Bengali. He said, doesn't matter. You've got a Bengali name. You will go to the Bukhi Bhai. He went. <laughs> he did well, of course. But then uh, he spoke Bengali with a Lucknowy accent. So that took all kinds. And finally, the machinery took off. And we did well, I think. Sir. Yeah, sir. So I could connect that part when you were talking very fondly about General Jacob. And because 
we knew him very well, sir. In fact, I was born at the command hospital in Calcutta. At that time, my father was staff captain to General Jacob, sir. There you are. Sir. So, sir. If, if you remember him, very well. you know what kind of a person he was. Of course, yes. sir. 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 And, sir. Yeah. Sir, tell me when you were appointed as the chief of the army staff, sir. So, were you the youngest in your course in NDA and IMA Academy? I didn't get you. So, were you one of the youngest in the age in your course at NDA and IMA, sir? I didn't know it was until my date of birth. It came out in my... I think Jamil Mahmood was the youngest. I think okay, Jamil sir. Mahmood was the youngest. Anyway, it was a toss-up. But uh, that was it. Yes, sir, sir. And sir, incidentally, General Jamil Mahmood's ADC is from my regiment, sir. Now he's Chief of Staff in the Northeast. General Sumit Talwar. He was his Who? ADC, sir. Sir, General Sumit Talwar, when he was a captain, he was mm -hmm. his ADC that time. Uh, get the name again. Sir, General Sumit Talwar, when he was a captain, when, Jim, when General Sumit Talwar was a captain. No, I have not met him. I have not met Sumit Talwar, no. Sir. But Jamil is my course. And uh, we became army commanders together. And then fate took a hand again. His yes, helicopter sir. crashed. Sir. Jamil's helicopter yes, crashed when he was going across the, the Peer Panjal. Yes, sir. 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 So, sir, tell us how was your, how was, if I have to compare between your command of 20 Lancers and the command of being at the helm of the Indian Army, which command, as a general, you would say, which command did you enjoy more? Being a CEO or the chief? I'm, I'm afraid I enjoyed being a CEO better. I, I employed the CEO that. better. The responsibilities are absolutely direct. As a chief, you can diffuse. You've got staff. You've got diffuse. Then you know that. But here, the responsibility is direct. And that is yeah. something that I always enjoyed. And, and there is again... How do you lead? You lead by example. You lead by example. Yes, you have to lead by example, especially when you're commanding men. Sir. 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 So, sir. Enjoyable was commanding the regiment. Sir. Sir. Complex sir. was, and, of course, being the uh, staff. Yeah. And incidentally and coincidentally, sir, your date of birth and my date of commissioning are the same, incidentally, sir. 6 September. 6 September, that's right. That's all. Oh, I didn't know that. Sir, do I have to come in much later? Decades later, or in 2003, on 6 September itself. Sorry? Though I was commissioned much later, sir, decades later, on 6 September itself. Yeah. Sir, and one more coincidence is that, sir, you were commissioned on uh, 9 June 1957. Incidentally, yes. my father too was commissioned on 9 June. Though, of course, over a decade later, sir, in 1968, sir. That was, that was Zamiruddin Shah. That's right, sir. You're talking about right. General Zamiruddin Shah. Sir, sir, Okay, sir. now I have a short conversation with Zamir. Where was it? Uh, so, where did I meet Zamir? Uh, and, you know, he's a handsome man. Sharp features, long nose, and so I said, Zamir, are you a Pathan? He said, Saab, mere ko Pathan bol diya. Mene ka bhi shagal se tu lagta hai ki Saab, mein Sayyad hoon. I'm a direct descendant of the Prophet. Apparently, that is the case. That's right, is that sir. the case? Sayyad hoon. Truth, that's true. So I said, well, you look. I thought you were a Pathan. You are nice, Saab. I said, okay. I learned that for the future. Yes. Sir, yes. Sir. sir, let's Saab. talk about post retirement as a chief, sir. You were the member of parliament at Rajya Sabha, sir. 
so how was now being in the, as in the parliament after being at the helm of affairs in the army sir different but challenging different certainly i was the head of the i was in the i was in the upper house that is the rajya sabha and uh, the rajya sabha i was sent to the rajya sabha uh by of all the people mr jyoti basu who was the chief, who was the communist chief minister of west bengal so when i he actually he sent for me he said you are the few one of you are one of the few bengali senior officers i said yes i have become a general he says i want you in politics i said look i am not a political person you will rue the day when you put me into politics i said no he said no i want a representation of bengalis at the official level and uh, actually jyoti basu himself is um i think he was educated in england Yes. yes yes and uh, his contemporary was the chief congress chief minister of west bengal who were also from um, uk so but the bitter op- opponents so i must thank uh, jyoti basu who was the chief minister for pushing me into So I was not really a politician. I was a member of the Rajya Sabha, which is not supposed to be. It is supposed to be the House of Elders. Uh, right, right. Well, that that was that, and uh, I met people from all over the country, and I thought it was quite dignified to begin with. There was none of this. i've never seen the slanging matches in the rajya sabha in those days which i'm seeing on the television now sir that's the things have changed very, yeah very true sir very true sir talking about mr jyoti basu uh, one of his yes. uh, the speaker of west bengal assembly at that time he was a speaker for over three decades uh, mr hashim abdul halim sir did you have any uh, association with him did you have any connection with him say again please sir we were talking about mr jyoti basu did you yes. have any action with the speaker of west bengal at that time mr hashim abdul halim who was very close to mr jyoti basu incidentally hashim what mr hashim abdul halim sir he was a speaker of west bengal assembly sir no sir sir, sir, sir. no so there was so there was one question i want to put for you in the end which i would put forward now and so which actually i wanted to put forward in the beginning before we started our conversation but i chose to put it forward now towards the end which is the first question i wanted to ask you was sir how is your health how are you keeping at the moment i saw you on screen the whole screen brightened up i'm i'm keeping well i had some medical problems i have some medical problems i'm wheelchair brown but that's i didn't ask for it my health is all right at least dimag theek hai sir dimag no, theek hai so because that was a question i had kept in the beginning but the moment you came on screen the moment you appeared on screen everything brightened up and suranjan was very very kind to set it up for us sir i really truly thank you it's been such an honor and such a pleasure being in conversation with you sir sir before we part any message you would like to give to the youth of a country sir who want to join the forces and those who perhaps at the moment haven't thought of uh, joining the forces because they the were from big a big thing about the security forces i'm talking of the army i'm talking of the army the biggest quality of the army that it is totally 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 um 
secular, which is the big deal nowadays, totally secular. And I am I'm, I'm sure we'll maintain that standard. This, this is why what makes the Indian army tick. It doesn't matter who you are. And we've got a we are a class uh, uh, class based army. Yes, we've got Sikhs, Jats, Rajputs, Rajput, Jats, Dogras. We've got Ahirs who are, but we are getting uh, Muslims in. The Ahir regiments have certain Muslims. So yes, sab aa raha hai. Only thing is they have to be secular. They have to maintain this secularism. That is my yes. only this thing, and that's how it should. That's how an army should be. Yes, sir. That's sir. how an army should be. Absolutely, sir. Sir, it's been truly an honor and a pleasure speaking to you, sir. Thank you very much for taking out time for my request, sir. And I, I, I was overwhelmed by the warmth that you exuberated on the phone yesterday, sir. Uh, please convey my regards to ma'am, to Mrs. Roy Chaudhary. She was also very, very warm. And of course, Ranjan and I are now virtual friends. Thank you very much, sir. Jai Hind, sir. Jai Hind, Jai Hind, Let that be. You see, I also, in the in the army, I said, don't say Ram Ram and Satsri Kaal and all that. Say Jai Hind, for God's sake. You know who you are, so. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Jai much. Sir. Jai Thank Hind. you.